Well, first tonight, if the government needs a basic lesson in market economics, and I think it probably does, it just has to look at what's happening to the tobacco industry. Now, you've got to understand, I'm no shill for big tobacco, but driving the price of a pack of cigarettes up to $50 doesn't make much economic sense. Realistically, who among us can afford to pay that much to feed the daily nicotine addiction? And I understand the price is a point that may drive some people to quit, but it also drives an awful lot more to alternative nicotine delivery systems. Now, sometimes these alternatives are illegally obtained, and hence the government misses out on tax revenue that made legal tobacco unaffordable in the first place. Tobacco retailers in this country are reporting that business is so bad that the federal budget could take a $5 billion hit. Now, some of you might think that's fantastic. Fewer smokes sold means or suggests that there are fewer people smoking and then there are associated fewer health consequences as well. That's a theory anyway, but it doesn't actually work like that. Instead, many consumers are now buying illicit tobacco, which is known as Chop Chop. It's readily and available and it's much, much cheaper. Tobacco retailers say the illegal tobacco trade costs the government up to $3.5 billion in lost excise every year. In the Australian Tax Office, they say the problem isn't quite that bad and it collects around $14 billion in excise annually. It estimates that there's 1,234 tonnes of illegal tobacco sold. So their estimates are it costs the budget around $2 billion a year. Either way, it's a heck of a lot of money. Now, the reason there is a market for illicit tobacco is because of price. If cigarettes weren't so expensive, thanks to exorbitant taxes, the illicit market would likely dry up. But cigarette taxes are hugely lucrative for government. A 2016 report on tobacco harm minimisation found, and I quote, from a purely financial perspective, the Australian government in 2015-16 raised more revenue in tobacco excise, $9.8 billion back then, than it lost through smoking attributable costs and loss of other revenue, which was around $2.2 billion. Tobacco retailers say there's also a strong move towards vaping or electronic cigarettes. This too is illegal, which makes little sense for several reasons. Firstly, vaping is everywhere already and almost impossible to stop now. Wouldn't it be far better to regulate it and gain some government revenue from the regulated supply? And studies also show that vaping is less harmful than cigarettes. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean it's safe. Just that scientists think it does less damage to your health if you vape versus if you smoke regular tobacco cigarettes. And a US study of lung injuries and deaths associated with vaping confirmed that 2,807 cases of e-cigarettes or vaping use associated lung injury and 68 deaths attributed to that condition. However, they then went on to say, and I quote again, these cases appear to be predominantly affect or to appear to predominantly affect people who modify their vaping devices or use black market modified e-liquids. This is especially true for vaping products containing THC. For those of you at home, THC is the psychoactive constituent of cannabis. I'll also point out that a lot of former smokers say that the move to vaping has been a helpful step on the way to quitting the habit altogether. I say it's a pity they have to break the law in order to do it. Again, Australian retailers claim that vaping is already a $2 billion national market in this country, and 90% of that is currently sold via dodgy operators online or through social media. So, what's the answer to potentially reducing smoking rates while also allowing the government to gain, to gain revenue and minimise the harm from tobacco use? Well, all rational roads lead to vaping as being the better choice. Regulate it, tax it, and use it to continue the campaign to get people off tobacco. Again, it's not the perfect solution, but then again, nothing in this world is. That doesn't mean we should let the perfect be the enemy of the good.